We wanted flying cars, but only got 140 characters. The now infamous quote by Peter Thiel served as a rallying cry for the next generation of entrepreneurs. It's a quote that stuck with me ever since I heard it a few years ago. An invitation of sorts to dream bigger and try bold ideas. In an era defined by technology and digital transformation, the one thing that seems to be missing is the flying cars. Where are the flying cars? I was promised flying cars. I don't see any flying cars. Why? 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 For decades, flying cars have endured as a symbol of the future's utopian promise. It's something humans have been dreaming about in more or less concrete ways since at least the beginning of the 20th century. Peter Thiel must be proud as a new cadre of urban mobility startups are introducing bold and innovative solutions that promise to radically change the way we move people and goods across our cities. Investors are also excited about this future and see a historical opportunity to shape a completely new market. The innovation that's making all this possible is the eVTOL, or electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. eVTOLs are efficient, operate with relatively little noise, and can traverse dense urban areas at high speeds, all with zero emissions. They promise to create massive benefits for human productivity, enhance connectivity, and drive significant economic growth for cities. As cities look for more creative ways to alleviate congestion and promote a more sustainable future of transportation, eVTOLs might just be the perfect solution. Imagine a future where you can book an air taxi and get from San Francisco to San Jose in 15 minutes, a trip that currently takes around an hour or more, and all at the price of what an Uber X costs today. Today we take a look at three startups that are building this future. Welcome to the future of urban air mobility. We start with Joby Aviation. They are building out an eVTOL vehicle and air taxi network. Joby is a clear leader in the increasingly crowded eVTOL space. Founded in 2009, they've been operating in relative secrecy up until January of 2020, when they announced a $500 million Series C round of funding led by Toyota. This was followed by its acquisition of Uber Elevate, Uber's air taxi operation. Continuing on that momentum, in February of this year, it was announced that Joby would go public via SPAC at a $6.6 .6 billion valuation. Powered by six electric motors, the five-seater vehicle can travel at a top speed of 200 miles per hour and at a range of 150 miles. They aim to launch commercial service by 2024, operating short haul flights priced similarly to UberX with the energy density of a Tesla, all while cutting travel time by 75% for the typical 25 mile trip. Creating an entirely new market is a monumental task and there are major challenges we need to overcome before we see these air taxis transporting humans in the future. Things like energy density, infrastructure, and regulatory hurdles. Joby is a great company to cover because they're chipping away at some of these major challenges. Their vehicle has completed over a thousand test flights and they're also working with the FAA to clear a pathway towards certification. And if all goes to plan, Joby's stated goal is to launch commercial operations by 2024. So it's really not that long until we might see these things in the air. The second company we're going to be covering today is a company called Lilium. Alongside Joby, the other favorite to emerge in the competitive air taxi market is a German company called Lilium. Their technology is at a similarly mature stage and they also recently announced plans to go public via SPAC at a $3.3 billion valuation. The VC market has essentially coalesced around Joby and Lilium as the two firms captured 85% of the venture capital invested in EV tall vehicles in 2020. Also, similar to Joby, they are planning to launch commercial operations by 2024. The Lilium Jet uses 36 single-stage electric motors to thrust the vehicle in nearly any direction. It operates similarly to a drone, but at a much higher level. It is designed for ease of production using automotive-style manufacturing methods and full automated production of electric engines, actuators, and batteries. For commercial operations, they're developing a seven-seater aircraft that will have a cruising speed of 175 miles per hour and a range of over 155 miles on a single charge. 
for me, one of the most compelling parts of the Lilium story is their approach towards tackling the infrastructure problem. That problem is if we are going to have air taxis in the future, we need places for them to take off and land. It's something called vertiports. Lilium is targeting Florida as its first market for commercial operations. There, they have picked out 14 locations for special hubs where its flying taxis will take off and land. In other words, they have 14 spots that will serve as vertiports in the future. They've already partnered with a land developer to build their first hub uh, about three miles outside of Orlando Airport. So this would put 20 million Floridians within the vehicle's 160 mile range. Between Lilium and Joby, the future feels so close. Both are aiming to launch commercial operations by 2024, but again, the challenges are many and complex. Probably one of the biggest hurdles that we haven't mentioned yet is that these eVTOLs in the future, especially as we get to a fully autonomous future with these vehicles, they're going to need a way to safely and efficiently uh, maneuver their way through uh, what's going to be an increasingly crowded low altitude sky. In order to do so, they're going to need infrastructure in place um, because the existing air traffic management system uh, is not really built for a future where there's going to be drones and autonomous vehicles, air taxis, all, all vying for ways to safely and effectively uh, maneuver through the third dimension. And this brings us to the third and final startup that we'll be covering today. Companies like AirMap are building the tools to make urban air mobility possible. The traditional air traffic management methods are insufficient for high frequency, high density, and high tempo network of autonomous vehicles. Essentially, what has worked for traditional aviation won't work for an autonomous future where drones, autonomous taxis, and other forms of autonomous transportation and delivery are in the low altitude sky. Enter UTM, or Unmanned Aerial System Traffic Management. UTM is essentially a set of digital infrastructure and services that will use high levels of automation to enable unmanned aerial vehicles to fly safely in low altitude space. Companies like AirMap started by providing a valuable service to drone operators. Today, they allow drone operators to dynamically plan routes, taking into account real time and predicted airspace and environmental conditions. In the future, they will automate the flight plans for eVTOLs, allowing them to react in real time to nearby flights, temporal restrictions, situational obstacles, weather, and vertiport availability. UTMs like AirMap will ensure that eVTOLs can complete their routes safely, avoid obstacles, and comply with all airspace regulations. In this sense, UTMs will essentially provide the critical foundation to enable eVTOLs to fly safely and autonomously in the future. They are the launch pad for a future of autonomous flights. I hope you're as excited about this future as I am. I'm excited about what eVTOLs can do to alleviate congestion, to provide a form of transportation that's more sustainable and that has zero emissions. Uh, I'm excited for what it can do for cities, for productivity and connectivity. You know, I don't think technology is a panacea for everything, but, uh, but I am excited about this tech. I think it's going to be awesome. As long as technologies like these are going to be inclusive and equitable, I, I think that we're going to be in a good place. And time will tell. To really see passengers being carried at scale, you know, that might take five, ten, or maybe even more years. And then fully autonomous versions of these vehicles um, could take much longer than that. But this is a three, five, ten year plan. And I think, uh, you know, big transitions uh, take time. So it, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to be actually um, interviewing uh, a startup in this space, in the EV tall space in the very near future. So super excited about that. So if you have questions, um, if, I'd, if I missed anything, please let me know. I'm no expert on this, but definitely super interested in this space and just the future of cities in general. So I uh, would love to hear from you. And please like the video, leave a comment if you have any feedback or questions, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.